Hey guys, welcome to the video. This is obviously self-explained. You can see from the title, this will be a weapons guide for the game known as Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. Now, today is April 1st of 2017, so obviously this is subject to change. The game was recently released into the early access or kind of the alpha build on Steam. And so obviously there's going to be rebalancing in the guns or changes. So I will be updating the video on that. Starting out with the pistols today, we got the first one, which is the P92. Now this is the nine millimeter pistol. This takes the same rounds as obviously some of the submachine guns. We have the micro Uzi and the UMP9, just to name the few. The magazine size is pretty large on the P92, but that's sacrificed for power. You still have a high firing rate of about at least 60%. Now the magazine size is about 15 rounds, but with the extended mag, you can bump that up to 20. This pistol is pretty common among the uh, masses, anywhere you can find it, really, because it's in most buildings as a starter pistol. The attachments you can put on here are the suppressor, extended mag, quick draw, and obviously an extended quick draw if you find that. Next gun on the list, and the same rarity actually as the P92, you'll seem to find this gun a lot as well. This is the P1911. Now this is the only gun in the class of pistols or gun in the game so far that actually takes the .45 rounds and the only one that uses them. The gun actually has a very small magazine of seven rounds. It can be bumped up to 12 obviously with the extended mag and it shares the same attachments as the P92. So you have the suppressor extended mag quick draw and the extended quick draw. Now the third pistol, very, very different from the first two. This gun, the R1895, actually takes 7.62 rounds. You can find that used in an AKM. You can use that. see those used in the M24 and the CAR-98. So some of the very high octane, high powered rifles in this game. Now this revolver actually very, it's not really that versatile because you only get seven rounds with this and the only attachment that shares from the other two pistols is the suppressor and that's the only other thing you can put on that no extended mags or anything else so you better be hitting your shots with this pistol or else you're screwed now the firing rate is super low uh the stability is about the same for all the pistols same with the effective range but obviously with the 762 rounds the r18 has a very high power output next section we will be talking about is the shotguns now there's only three of them so far we may see the fourth in the future but we don't really know or the balancing between the three obviously subject to change now the first gun we'll be talking about is the s1897 this is the gun that takes the five shells in the magazine that's the main difference between that and the s686 the two shotguns that are mainly kind of mixed up because they look about the same this one has a bit of a wider spread and a smaller range as opposed to the s686 they both use the choke and bullet loops and they're both about the same rarity as common you can see them almost as often as the pistols the difference between the two is the ammo size actually and a bit of the stats but the s686 hits like a truck this gun has a massive damage for output as a shotgun and it's only double barrel so you only get two shells at a time what a choke is on a shotgun if you guys don't know it's one of the main attachments that you'll find for a shotgun and very very common you'll see a choke in almost every building you go in. But what the choke does is it tightens the spread of the shotgun, putting a little bit more range on what you'll be able to hit. Now, if you put that on S686, you can turn this thing into a sniper. It's crazy. Now, moving right along, we have the S12K. Now, this is a very uncommon shotgun. Not many people use it because it's notoriously bad or hasn't really helped them too much. Now, this can be argued around in the comments a little bit, but I haven't found much use in it. This also takes five shells like the S1897. This has a ton of attachments you can add on that kind of boosts up its ability to be a better gun. Now, this is a more uncommon shotgun and that's just due to it being able to have a little bit more attachments. There's some kind of unrealistic ones because it shares most of the attachments as the ARs do. You can put an extended mag, a quick draw, obviously extended quick draw. You can put a suppressor on the shotgun. You can put a compensator, a flash hider, red dot, holographic, and you can put all three of the magnified scopes, the four, eight, and 15 times scopes. Why you would need that, I have no idea. Now this has a lower power meter as opposed to the other shotguns, a little bit of a higher firing rate and a way higher stability than they do. Uh, still not used that often though. This is the section that mainly most people are confused about or want some insight upon because the rifles are very different but also very similar. They share minute differences and some of them share some strengths between the two and you won't really be able to differentiate in the heat of a game. So that's why I'm here to share this with you guys. The first rifle you're going to see on our list is the M16. 
Now, this gun is mainly used in a more DMR configuration because of its lower power, but higher effective range and very high firing rate. Now, that gives you the ability to kind of spam when the enemy is a bit closer, but you still got that range for the distance shots that you'll need in the future. So, the ammo type that all these rifles use, except the AKM, is the 5.56 rounds. The M16 has a base magazine capacity of 30 rounds, extended mag is 40. All the rarities of the 3 out of the 4 is uncommon, so you'll still see them, but not as often as pistols or shotties. And the attachments that are used on the M16 are the suppressor, extended mag, quick draw, extended quick draw, you can see a compensator, flash hider, red dot, holographic, and all the magnified scopes, so that's 4, 8, and 15 times. The next rifle on our list is the AKM. Now, this is the oddity, I would say, of the bunch, because it doesn't use the same ammo type as the other three rifles. It actually uses the 7.62 rounds, as opposed to the 5.56. Now, it shares the same magazine capacity, M16, of 30 rounds, but obviously, you know, extended mag to 40. Shares the rarity, like I said earlier, Except the difference between the AKM and the M16 is the AKM actually has the full auto capability. Now, the 7.62 rounds pack a punch and have a little bit more power than the 5.56 using the M16. Now, this full auto is usually used at a closer range, and that's why the stats are a little bit more evened out for the AKM. It's got a bit of a higher power. Uh, the effective range is a little bit uh, higher. It's about 60%. Stability is about 40-ish, so that's pretty good, but not good for long range when you're trying to put more shots in and the firing rate's a little bit lower than the M16. Now the attachments are about the same. We have the suppressor, the extended, and the quick draw, and then we have the extended quick draw, the compensator, flash hider, and then you can use all the sights on this gun, red dot holographic, 4, 8, and 15 times scopes. The next rifle is the M416, one of the most highly sought after rifles in the game, mainly because of its versatility among roles. It takes about two roles, on the battlefield that many people like to play it as, a very close spray type gun or a DMR in the ranges. It uses its own type of M416 tactical stock branded on its own and can be only used on this gun so far. And then it's one of the only two rifles that can use the angled or vertical foregrips along with the SCAR-L. Now it shares the same ammo type as the M16 and the SCAR-L of the 5.56 rounds, the magazine of 30, and extended magazine of 40. Shares the same rarity as the AKM and M16 of Uncommon, like I said earlier, and then you can use the, all the same attachments as used on those first two rifles I talked about. Obviously, it's suppressor, extended, quick draw, compensator, flash hider, all the sights, red dot, holographic, 4, 8, and 15. The next rifle we will be talking about is the SCAR-L. Now, this is the last and final rifle of the four, but not to be skipped over because this is the one that is usually compared to the M416. They share similar stats, and when compared next to each other of the naked without attachments, the SCAR-L kind of takes the cake a little bit more. But when the M416 is maxed out, it's a little bit better and a little bit more versatile. But if you have two used, you definitely want to use the SCAR-L in the spray configuration because its spray pattern is easy to control and it's got a little bit of a tighter spray pattern. So when used up close, it's it's very, very good. Now it uses the same ammo type, obviously has the M4 and M16, the 5.56 magazine of 30 and extended of 40. It has about the same rarity, although that can be argued because the Scar L doesn't appear as often. You won't see it as that much, so it might be a little bit more... I guess rare as they would say it. The attachments that you can put on the SCAR L are the same as pretty much all the other guns except this is one of the exclusive two along with the M4 that can only use the angled or vertical grips. Next we'll be talking about the SMGs. Now there's only two, you could argue there's a third one in the game but I'm kind of going to leave that out. The Tommy gun can be talked about later because it's kind of dropped in the crates. Anyways, moving on into the submachine guns, we start with the Micro Uzi. Now this takes the 9mm ammo type as well used in the P92 and the UMP9. Now the Micro Uzi is kind of exclusive because this thing shreds. It, it, the firing rate is astounding and you, I mean you're dead as soon as you go next to it. Uh, but that's sacrificed for the power, the range, and stability. The gun can't be used pretty much anywhere else except for a town because you literally have to be right next to the person to be able to kill them with it. It uses a magazine size of about 25 rounds. The extended is 35 rounds. And it's actually a very common gun to find along with the UMP9. They share about the same and you'll find them a lot in the towns. Now the Micro Uzi has exclusive attachments. It has its own stock but it shares the suppressor, extended mag, quick draw, 
extended quick draw, and then a compensator and flash hider. So the SMGs share about the same attachments, except the micro Uzi has an exclusive stock. Next up, we got the UMP9. Now this is the submachine gun, the kind of counterpart to the micro Uzi. Why? Because it kind of has the complete polar opposite stats. It has a higher power, effective range, and stability, but sacrifices that firing rate. Now the firing rate on the UMP9 is about 60-65%, while on the micro Uzi it's about 70-80%. to 80%. It all comes down to kind of how close quarters you are. The UMP9, I would say, is a little bit better in the long run. Now they take the same ammo type as the 9mm, as said earlier, and the magazine capacity of 30 rounds, and an extended mag of 45. So actually the extended mag on the UMP adds 15 rounds as opposed to the 10 on the micro uzi like i said same rarity and then the same attachments as well for here it obviously doesn't have that extra stock like the micro uzi does but you have the suppressor you can use the angled and vertical foregrips on here that you can use on the rifles like the m4 and the scar l so that's actually kind of cool the extended mag quick draw mag uh, extended quick draw compensator flash hider and then you can put red dot holographic or the four times but you cannot put the eight times or the 15 on the ump Next gun I want to talk about is the Tommy gun, or the kind of the exclusive SMG that you can only find in airdrops. The reason I kind of wanted to separate it is because of its rarity among the Micro Uzi and UMP9, which those two are actually very common, while the Tommy gun you can only obviously get from the airdrops. Now, I said earlier that the P1911, the pistol, is the only one in the game that takes the 4.5 ammo type, or the 4.5 ACP rounds, but actually the Tommy gun takes it as well. Now the Tommy gun pumps out so much ammo so fast, it has a magazine size of 100 rounds, but the firing rate is 100% on the scale, which is it's just astounding how much it puts out. The stability is about 30%, 30 to 35, power is about 35 to 40%, and the effective range is maybe about, eh, sort of, maybe a little bit low, 45 to 50%. So. It's not too crazy, but you can put SMG attachments on this gun. You can put a suppressor, a compensator, and a flash hider, but you actually cannot put any type of sight on this gun, which is kind of, you know, a little not good. You'd excuse my English, but it would be a little bit preferred to have a sight on a gun. You know, I'd rather take a UMP9 with a sight on there as opposed to a Tommy gun with iron sights because iron sights usually aren't too good the next gun that i'll be talking about kind of a rarity in the game as well along with the tommy gun only comes in airdrops is the m249 the only gun of its type a light machine gun now this gun's kind of impractical in a way that it's only really used for destroying cars it pumps out so much uh high capacity rounds in that short amount of time you can actually shred through a car but many times in a late game you really won't have a use for this as it's only kind of used for medium to shorter ranges the accuracy isn't too good when you start to spray down and the spray control isn't amazing, but it's 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 okay, I guess. It takes a 5.56 rounds like a Scar L, M4, or an M16. Um, it has a capacity, like the Tommy gun, of 100 rounds, and it uses about the same attachments as rifles as well. You can use, actually, the AR suppressor, the AR compensator, and an AR flash hider, but you can also use all the sights in the game, so the red dot holographic and the 4.815 times scopes, making it a little bit of a versatile gun, but not really used or kind of practiced for a late game mid game unless you're really looking to destroy cars and kind of get people out of there in the next section we will be talking about the snipers two of which you can only find in airdrops and one of them actually to start off with is the car 98k is one of the only snipers in the game which you can find on the ground and in the airdrop this takes the ammo type of a 762 the same as obviously the r1895 the sks and the akm one of the higher caliber rounds and it only has a magazine size of 5. Without, you cannot extend the mag. There are no extended mags so far, so you won't be able to kind of extend that. You'll be stuck with 5 rounds for most of the game. The rarity of this gun, it's it's very, it is very rare. You won't be able to find it that often on the ground. Airdrops, it's also pretty uncommon to see in the airdrops, mainly because you mostly will get the M24 or the AWM or M249 Tommy gun. You won't really see the car 98 as often. The firing rate is super low. This is um, kind of a semi-automatic or single shot. It has a very high power, not as high, obviously, as the other snipers. It's about 60-70-ish uh, percent. It has a very long range, making it, obviously, a sniper, so you'll be able to use it. You won't have to compensate that much for bullet drop, although leading will still need to be compensated for with any gun. And the stability is kind of 
a little bit there on the lower side, 30%. Obviously, you won't be spraying with it, so that doesn't really matter too much, but while you're walking or kind of moving while shooting this gun, you won't be able to hit it that well. Now, the attachments you can use on this are a suppressor, a sniper suppressor. Uh, there's car 98 bullet loops which you can put on the back. Although, if you can find a cheek pad, you should probably use that instead of the bullet loops. Uh, there's a compensator for the sniper, flash hider for sniper, and then you can use all of the five sights on this gun as well. Moving right along, we have one of the airdrop only snipers you can find. It's actually the M24. Now, this isn't the best sniper in the game, but it has a little bit more power than the Car 98. It's about 70-ish percent. The effective range is almost 100 percent. It's about like 90-ish. And it's, it's very long range. It's not as good as the AWM, but it's one of the better snipers out there. Obviously, better than the Car 98 and SKS. Now, all the snipers except the SKS are one shot to the head without, or with a level 3 helmet. So, any helmet, you can one shot to the head with all the snipers. A little bit, I don't know, that's a detail that could be talked about in another video, but something that I don't really agree with. Now, the M24 also takes 7.62 rounds like the Car 98, SKS, and all those other guns. It has a little bit of the same stability. The firing rate is the same. Obviously, the power and effective range are the only differences, but the reason that is is because the exclusivity of the M24 is a little less than a Car 98. You can get an extended mag for this, although the base size is 5 rounds, the extended is 7 rounds. Obviously, like I said, only an airdrop type. You can put the suppressor, the cheek pad on here, the extended mags only coming for the M24 or AWM or the SKS. Uh, you can also get a quick eject mag, which is kind of like a quick draw per se. And then you can get the compensator flash hider and you can put all five of the sights on here as well. Up next, we have the Beast of Gun, probably the best one in the game, maybe right up there with the M416 or the Scar L. It's highly sought after, and many people run and hide from this gun because of its just insane power. It is, of course, the AWM, a sniper that can only be found in airdrops and also pretty exclusive there. The only gun in the game as well that takes the 300 Magnum rounds that kind of just pump out an insane amount of power. Like I said, the power is so high that the bar is filled up. You have 100% power and 100% effective range, so you really don't have to compensate for drop with this gun at all unless you're shooting maybe like across the map. Stability is about the same for all the snipers anyways, and the firing rate's pretty low. Obviously, like I said, 300 magnum rounds. The magazine capacity is five rounds, and the extended is 10 rounds. So you definitely want to try and find an extended magazine because that'll be very helpful when you're trying to land shots on a moving target, right? Because you'll have 10 tries instead of five. Now, you can put the sniper suppressor, the cheek pad, obviously, extended mag, or the compensator, the flash hider, and then all five of the sights. Mainly, people use either the ACOG or the 8x, but a, a gun like this usually takes the 8x. You'll be able to shoot pretty far with that. Last but not least, we have the SKS, one of the oddities of the sniper group, mainly because it's got about 50% power, the effective range is about 60%, the stability is about 50 as well, and firing rate's a little bit lower. It is a DMR configuration sniper, and that makes it a little bit different, right? Because it takes a little bit more shots to kill a person. I think it takes about 3 or 4 on a level 3 um, vest and level 3 helmet, 4 or 5 maybe. I don't really know that much, I haven't used it as often, but this also takes the 7.62 rounds that many guns in this game do, the M24 or Car 98. You know, may I say more, I've already talked about those too much. But the magazine capacity is 10 rounds, and then you can put an extended mag on here for 20. This is a pretty rare gun, goes up there with the Car 98. Kind of found about the same in uh, frequency. Uh, both guns, kind of okay, but they have their differences. The Car 98 pumps out a lot more damage, but the SKS is a little more consistent. Now the attachments you can put on here are actually an angled and vertical foregrip, only of the sniper variation though. And then there's an SKS tactical stock, but they haven't really put that in yet. So the SKS is kind of still of a newer gun by the time this video is made. So a lot of these attachments that are available for the gun still aren't really added on or working too well yet. But you can also put the extended uh, mag or a quick eject mag, the compensator obviously, or the exclusive flash hider for the SKS. And then you can put all five sights like the other guns in the game. Now, this last section is kind of going to go through a little bit faster. This is just the melee items and grenades. Uh, for anyone who actually really wanted to know, there was kind of a myth going around that the pan could insta-kill someone. That was only in the very early access version of this game that happened a couple... Actually, I think it was about four months ago. Um, but the pan could actually insta-kill people. But that is kind of a myth for the new game. 
So the four melee weapons you have in this game right now are the pan, machete, sickle, and crowbar, um, all of which can melee or kill someone between two to four hits, depending on their armor, or you can do one to two hits if you actually land some headshots with them. So they all are about the same. You would think, you know, one does a little bit more damage than the other, but no. They all do the same. Uh, the exclusivity, though, is that if you do have the pan, it deflects bullets off of you. Now, the pan doesn't really sit in a good spot to deflect bullets, but just note that it does. Moving over to grenades, kind of the final section of the video. We're going to start it off with the frag grenade. Now, obviously, most of you who've ever played a first-person shooter know what a frag grenade is. Self-explanatory. Now, you do want to note, in this game, if you are very new... You'll come to realize that you can't cancel grenades, and if you do put it away, you're kind of screwed because it will blow up in your pocket and you die. I've had this happen to me before. It's atrocious. I don't like it. <laughs> but, obviously, a frag grenade, grenade self-explanatory. It's got about, you know, a, a pretty high radius of explosion, um, and if you land it right next to someone, it usually will instantly kill them. Now, the smoke grenade, very very sought after as a kind of a utility mainly because you can create some cover for yourself or be able to kind of split up vision for enemies mainly if an enemy has an awm and you're out in the open you want to throw a smoke or something stun grenades are not used as often nor do i see them used that often by other players um actually haven't even seen one in action before but obviously like it says on the tin kind of thrown to blind them uh you can run up on an opponent so usually if you land a couple shots on someone they're patching up you might want to throw a stun blind them you can run up and kill them the molly one of the probably the best grenades in the game especially for a final or a ending game to you know weed someone out of a hiding spot the molly obviously throwing fire everywhere and you're ability to kind of set people or put damage over time as opposed to a frag grenade where it's instant cluster of damage Thank you guys so much for watching. It's kind of a newer type of video on my channel, making a weapons guide, but I definitely want to put one out there for the community. Uh, this actually was based off of a Steam guide, and I'll put all the credits in the description. I took some stats from them, also from Reddit as well. So I'll put all of the necessary citations in the description if you do want to check that out for further depth. And obviously this isn't a final version of the video, nor is it of the weapons guide, because obviously the game will be evolving over time. So again, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're new, drop a sub, a like, anything. Thank you guys so much, and I will catch you all in the next one. Peace!